Okay. All right. Oh my God. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you might be able to tell, I've got a bit of a different background today. This is just a temporary background. Basically, I'm completely redoing my whole filming room and I don't currently have my background to how I want it. I've still got a few more bits that need to arrive and yeah. It's a work in progress at the moment, but hopefully soon I will be able to show you the full transformation video. I am doing a transformation kind of video and showing you the whole process and everything, but it's kind of a work in progress at the moment. So I've set up this temporary background, which is looks a bit shit to be honest, but it'll do for now. So today I'm gonna to be testing some new in makeup, pretty self-explanatory. I've got the new Fenty Beauty Founder powder foundation powder foundation i've got the new misguided makeup not all of it i've got quite a few bits of that though like the foundation and the freckle pen and the brow stuff and mascara lipstick bronzer i've got quite a few bits from the misguided range i've got roxy's new collaboration with revolution i've got a nyx primer i've got a mixture of drugstore and high end but it's mostly drugstore i think so that's what i'm going to be doing if you would like to join me i would appreciate it if you want to give this a thumbs up i would also appreciate that too and if you aren't subscribed and you like my videos i would also appreciate if you subscribe because i think most people that watch my videos, like 50% aren't subscribed. I mean, you can if you want, don't have to. But I hope you guys are all doing good and I hope you have a good weekend. Let's get into the video. Just a little um, heads up, this tracksuit that I'm wearing, which is part of my skinny dip collection. I am also wearing the joggers. It's actually back in stock. We did a restock. So if you guys want to get your hands on this and you weren't able to the first time, it is back in stock. Just a little heads up. I will leave a link down below if I remember. Hopefully I remember. So the first thing that I'm going to be testing is the NYX Bright Maker. Is that what it's called? Bright Maker. Yeah, that's what it says. Bright Maker Primer. And I think... Oh, I thought this was a vitamin C one. I'm completely wrong. It says on the back, infused with papaya. And it doesn't say a whole lot more than that. I got this recently when NYX sent over a bunch of their primers. So I haven't tried it before. Let's give it a go. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it smells really nice. It looks like it's got shimmer in it. I don't know how well you can see that, but it looks like it's got shimmer. Let's put it on and rub it in. Mmm, it smells so good. It smells like fruity. Oh, I've got an eyelash on my nose. Okay, actually, you know what? I thought it was going to be really shimmery um, and kind of give me that, you know, robotic tin man, smothered your face and highlighter kind of look, but it actually hasn't. Yes, it's definitely given a glow to my skin, but it's not super shimmery, which thank God, because I thought that was about to end very badly. It definitely has a little bit of shimmer in there, but it's not overwhelming. I would say you'd probably like this primer better if you had dry skin, because it does feel quite oily, actually. I personally don't think I would use this again on the daily it's just not really my kind of primer that I tend to go for I think I would like it more if it left that kind of tacky feeling but it more just feels a little bit oilier so I think definitely one for dry skin I much prefer NYX's other primers like the honey Jumi up the hydra touch is that what it's called hydra something the one in the blue tube just because they're a little bit more lightweight and they give that kind of tacky feeling this one's a little bit heavier so I would recommend this probably if you had dry skin so misguided launched a beauty brand and it's been out for a couple of weeks now a lot of you guys actually asked me to test it. They did send me over some bits and I have seen a lot of people do sponsored videos on these. So for the foundation, I believe this comes in 25 shades. The price range is pretty decent. I think the most expensive thing is either £15 or £12, but I will leave everything linked down below in case you guys want to have a look and kind of shop these yourself. Let me just have a look. Okay, so the foundation is £12. The shade range is decent. It's not the best. I think they would definitely benefit from adding more shades because I don't think everyone's going to find their shade with the 25 shades that they've got. I will put a picture on the screen of the swatches. I've got these shades, what shades have I got? Six, seven, and five. Five, six, seven, eight, my boots scootin' baby is driving. I think, to be honest, these all look exactly the same. Is this just me being crazy? Uh, they all look so similar. Let me have a look. So those are the swatches there, five, six, and then seven on the N. It's strange, like when I kind of hold them back here, they all do look very similar. I think I'm gonna go for the shade seven. Six and seven are very, very similar. I would just say that six is a little bit more warm and seven is a little bit more neutral, but in terms of the tone, they look very, very similar. So I think I'm gonna go for seven. Obviously this is to match my uneven tan, which definitely is not just instant tan that's on my hands and my neck. 
No. And for my brushes, I've got Roxy's brush collection with Revolution. So she's just launched a new collab and part of the collab is a brush set. It comes with two beauty blenders. So I have just run one of them under the water. I think they're both the same. So this is supposedly a buildium, buildium, am I okay today? Buildable medium coverage in a demi matte finish with radiant diamond powder pigments. Long lasting and transfer proof, dermatologically tested. Also, I think the misguided range is vegan and cruelty free, which is pretty good. I quite like squeezy tube foundations because you can kind of control exactly how much you want. Is that enough or is that too much? I thought it was gonna be, have like a nozzle and I was trying to get this bit off, but that's just for design. I think it's just a regular squeezy tube unless I'm being really dumb. So let's blend it in. It's quite light coverage. You know what? I'm just gonna try the other side with a brush because it could potentially be the sponge that's soaking up some of the product. Let me just give it a go with a foundation brush. This is one that I use a lot. It's actually one of Tammy's brushes. Okay, let's do my forehead with the sponge. It does actually look really nice on my skin. It is blending nicely, but I would definitely not say that this is medium coverage. And I would also definitely not say that it's demi matte. I would say it's more of a glowy foundation, actually. I don't know whether it will dry down. It could be because the primer that I've put on underneath is quite glowy. Uh, maybe it is a medium coverage. I mean, I guess medium means that it covers some stuff, but doesn't cover everything. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on because I'm not sure how well you can see, like it hasn't really covered all of my blemishes and stuff. So let's see if it is buildable and put on a bit more. My skin still looks quite skin-like though, which I like. It doesn't feel too thick and heavy, which is actually quite nice. I thought that it was gonna be more matte and be a bit more detectable, but it actually looks quite pretty on my skin. I like the finish that it's giving. You know what? That actually looks really pretty. Let me give you a quick close up. Okay, my face looks very, very glowy. It doesn't seem to have dried down. I would definitely not say it's a demi matte finish. It's much more of a glowy finish, but again, I think the primer underneath isn't helping, but even if I was wearing a matte primer, pretty sure this wouldn't be matte. Yeah, I don't really know how um, good of a close up this is, but it actually looks really nice on my skin. It doesn't feel too heavy, which is good. I do actually quite like that. I think for 12 pounds, it's decent, and I will definitely wear this again and continue to test it. It looks nice on my skin. Skin. For my concealer, I've got the new Revolution Eye Bright Illuminating Under Eye Concealers. These have got vitamin C in them, and I've got four shades here. I've got the shade Medium Light. Okay, this one's going to be too medium yellow. That one just looks kind of yellow, as the name suggests. We've got Light, and then we've got Fair. This is giving me major Charlotte Tilbury vibes. I've just realized the Charlotte Tilbury concealer, I swear the packaging is so similar to this. Maybe it's a dupe. So I'm going to take the shade. Let's just see. Only thing about these type of concealers, I do have some of these twistable concealers that I do really like. Like for example, I do actually really like the Charlotte Tilbury one and I really like the Maybelline Eraser one, but they get so messy because like, as soon as you put the cap back on, it just gets all the concealer smushed and it's just like, it's just not the one. So they take bloody ages to the product to come out. Come on. There we go. So I've actually gone for the shade Medium Light. Oh. That looks like the perfect shade. Wow, I've put on quite a lot there. Put a bit down my nose. Ooh, okay. Oh my God, I love that sound, listen. That is such an ASMR sound. It actually feels quite thick. I thought it would feel a bit more lightweight, light coverage because it's an under eye concealer. And I definitely did not need this much. Okay. That's actually got really nice coverage. I was not expecting that. I was kind of expecting it to be a lightweight, more natural concealer, just because it said that it's a kind of illuminating under eye concealer, but that's got coverage. Let's try on my blemishes. It actually kind of looks quite matte on my chin. Yeah, look, on my spots here. Oh my God. It's kind of dried down almost, and that has pretty much completely covered those areas. Yeah, on my nose, can you see it? Looks a bit more matte. It's almost like the products have swapped textures. The Revolution Concealer was supposed to be illuminating, and it's a bit more matte, and the Misguided Foundation was supposed to be matte, and it's a bit more illuminating. That is a really nice concealer. I really, really like that. It has got coverage, and it blended really nicely. I've got the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation, and I've got the shade one. 90. First of all, I absolutely love the packaging. It just looks so aesthetically pleasing to me. It's like a little, I don't know. I just like how it's kind of like, it's not sharp and 
it's more round. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just really like it. It feels really nice. And it just, I don't know. I just like the compact. So you do get a sponge in here, but I never really ap apply my powder with a sponge. It's just like a very thin, kind of like reminds me of the types of sponges that you'd get in like your mum's makeup when you were younger. Do you know what I mean? Just not for me. I have actually tried this one before, but not on camera. I was lucky enough to be invited to a Fenty Beauty Zoom event, which was with one of Rihanna's makeup artists, which was really cool. And he was giving tips for this foundation and saying like, you know, you can use it to brighten your eyes, under your eyes, you can use it all over your face. So I'm actually gonna use this all over my face. And let's get out Roxy's brushes. So you get five brushes in here, you get three eye brushes and two face brushes. I'm gonna use this one, which I'm assuming is kind of like an under eye brush. It feels quite dense though. Just use this to set my under eyes. Actually, this might be a bit dark for setting my under eyes. I have got a couple of lighter shades, which might have been better, but let's just see because I want to compare it to the other side. You know what though, what's really strange? It still feels a little bit sticky underneath where I've just set. I'm just gonna take the slightly bigger brush and put this on half of my face. I think maybe I need to try this on its own to see its full effects. I do definitely think that has added a little bit of extra coverage though. It looks nice, like it's matte, but hmm. I don't really feel like it's set my makeup very well. Um, It still feels a little bit tacky underneath there, which might be good for some people, but I think for me, I probably wouldn't use this as an all over face powder. I'd maybe just use it like on areas where I needed a little bit more coverage, like on blemishes or something. And then maybe on days where I just want to whack on a powder foundation instead of liquid. These brushes feel really soft, by the way. Also, Roxy, if you are watching this video, congratulations on your new collection. I mean, it looks beautiful. I haven't tested all of it yet. The sponge is pretty nice, by the way. It's actually quite soft. Some of Revolution's previous sponges that I've tried have been quite hard, but this one's actually really squishy. And the brushes feel nice. Now I think maybe my face is a little bit too dark compared to the rest of my body. I do like the powder foundation, but would you guys like me to try that maybe separately in a video all by itself, where I just put this on my face and test it as an actual foundation? Let me know, because I don't really think that this is giving it its full um, test because I did it over the top of other makeup. Then for my bronzer, I've got again the Misguided Bronze Duo Powder. This is called the Instant Vacay Bronzer and I've got the shade Light. There's only two shades of this. So this is the light one and as you can see, you get two shades. I have seen the other shade, which is the, I think it's called like Medium Slash Dark. I get that it's a first launch um, of their beauty brand. However, Misguided are a big company. You would think they would have the facilities to launch at least least three bronzer duos because the medium dark one is definitely not dark enough to bronze a lot of people and I think I've seen people that are similar skin tone to me using the medium dark one um, because the light one is quite light. More shades of bronzer are definitely needed. I won't lie, I'm not the biggest fan of this packaging. I do think it looks quite cheap and I know that the makeup is affordable but I don't know it's just packaging isn't for me. I'm just gonna try and mostly dip into this one because I think the other one's gonna be a bit light. All right, luckily it is the type of bronzer that isn't super pigmented, which I really like in a bronzer actually. I don't like my bronzers to be like, you do one dip and then it's like, whoa, suddenly really hard to blend out. Cause I actually really dip my brush in there and it's come out, come out with this amount of product, which I actually quite like in a bronzer. It's not bad, it's not bad. I do quite like it. It's not fully matte, which I really like, but then it's not, it's not got any visible glow to it. It's just like not, you know, dead matte. It doesn't look crusty looking, but it is quite a light coverage bronzer. So I think especially for that reason, they definitely need to expand their shade range because the medium dark is not gonna bronze a whole load of people. Oh, one sec, let me just, I'm gonna use the lighter shade to do my nose actually. It is quite warm, but you know what? That lighter shade I really like for my nose contour because it isn't too pigmented. I think the only product I'm missing in this video is blush. So I'm just gonna put on a little bit of Milani Luminoso because it's the first one that I could find. Next up, I've got the Misguided Highlight Highlighter Powders and I've got three shades. I'm not sure how many shades they do. These look quite nice. I've got the shade Glowing Out Out. I've got Golden Hour and I've got Iced Out. Let's just have a look. Ooh, that one's really pretty. That one is the darkest shade that I got, which is Golden Hour. Hopefully you can see that there. This would definitely be a little bit too dark for me. Then the middle shade is Iced Out, which looks like this. Ooh, that one looks like 
like that. And then the other shade I've got is Glowing Out Out. You know what? I'm not going to swatch this one because first of all, I can see that it's very pale, but it's got that slight sort of pinky shift to it. I don't even really think that that's picking up on camera. Is that picking up on camera? I don't think it is. I'm not going to swatch this one because then I will have dug my fingers in all of them and I'll probably give this to somebody. Okay, so I'm going to take some of this. Wow, okay. That is actually really nice. It's quite powdery though. And I think even, is this shade a little bit light? It's giving a sort of greyish, is it giving a grey cast from the side, on the front? I don't know actually. Let me just really like work it into my skin. It is definitely very blinding. It's not the type of highlight you want to go for if you want to look natural. Like you can really see it on your skin if that makes sense. It's very in your face, but that is beautiful. I've got to say that is really nice actually. Yeah, can you see what I mean? Um, It's definitely there. You can definitely see it on your skin. It looks like, you know, you've got very obvious highlighter on. I think this shade is maybe a little bit light for me. Moving on to eyebrows. Oh my God, I forgot. I've got something, I've got something really cool. Yeah, this is a freckle pen. I love drawing on fake freckles. I haven't done this in ages. Okay, let's do some dots and then blend it out. Okay. It is still quite dark on me, I think. I mean, obviously they're not really gonna look like real freckles. Did I just draw on my jumper? This is so much easier because you don't have to keep dipping into a pot. You can literally just dab on these freckles with the pen, blend it out. Okay, they do look very obvious actually. It's still quite dark. Can you see them? I think it would probably be better to do this step before you powder. Yeah, you know what? I really like that freckle pen. I think that's really cool. Next, we move on to eyebrows. I've got the Misguided Brow You Doing Tinted Brow Marker. By the way, I forgot to say at the beginning, like this video is not sponsored by Misguided. They did send me this stuff and a lot of you guys asked me if I'd try it, so. I did have a little play around with this the other day. I've got the shade Light and it actually looks pretty close to my natural brow color it's just a very skinny little pen which again i like how they didn't just like only stick to brow pencils only thing i find with these kind of pens is that sometimes over the top of foundation they go a bit sort of clogged up let's do one eyebrow completely first and i'll compare it to the other brow All right, I think that's a pretty good color. Is that too warm or is that a good color for my eyebrows? You know what? I wasn't expecting it to um, have that much pigment. I thought it might kind of dry up after the first swipe, but I think that's pretty nice. At the front, I just drew in some fake brow hairs and then I just kind of filled in the rest of my eyebrow. I guess the real test is if it will do my other eyebrow. Okay, hang on, it's starting to dry up a little bit. Ah, I just gave it a shake and I shook it too much. Oh shit, there's... Okay, don't shake it a lot because now there's loads of product in the lid. Anyway, what was I saying? I can't even remember. Hmm. I do quite like it. It's a little bit more fiddly to use because I guess I'm just not used to it. Oh no, I filled in this brow a lot more than the other brow. Okay, let me just color in my eyebrow. I mean, they look quite bold, don't they? I think maybe I've put a little bit too much on. I think this eyebrow looks a bit better than this eyebrow. Oh, and also it kind of sets. It's almost like sticky. What? I was not expecting that. I guess maybe to stick your eyebrows in place, maybe. So I've got Roxy's collaboration palette with Revolution. This is the Cozy Vibes palette. The packaging is all kind of like a knitted jumper, which is very Roxy's style. And this is just a neutrals eyeshadow palette. Let me open it up. Ooh. I love this. It's got that sort of texture on it. That feels really nice. And it looks really nice. I love the look of it. It looks really pretty. Okay. I mean, it looks beautiful. It looks very, very pretty. First impressions most of the shades are quite light. There aren't that many dark colors in here. This one is the darkest, which is called Leaves. There's a lot of sort of pinky mauve tones in here, which aren't necessarily my favorites, but I know that my opinion is not the same as everyone else's opinion. This is a very Roxy palette. She loves these kind of neutral colors. Um, and I mean, it does look very aesthetically pleasing. To be honest, these kind of shades uh, on this side aren't really the ones that I would go for, and they are all very pale. So I'm not 100% sure like how much these 
ones would show up on a lot of people's skin tones. Obviously the shimmers would be absolutely fine, but it's more like this shade and this shade, they're very, they're, they are quite light. I'm gonna go for this half of the palette, which seems to be a little bit more on the brown sort of side. I'm gonna use her brushes, which look really nice and they feel really soft. So it would have been nice to have a flat eyeshadow brush as well as these three, because you get two blending brushes, a short sort of smoky pencil brush. So I'm gonna start with the shade Knit Sweater first. Oh, and by the way, I didn't set my eyelids. I've just kind of left them, so they're a little bit sticky from the concealer. Okay, this shade is pretty much my skin tone. That will be a really good, like, blending out shade for me, but I am just gonna dip into... Let's go for Hot Chocolate, which is this shade just here. They do seem really nicely pigmented. Okay, this is the type of shade that I would usually go for if I just wanted to whack something all over my eyelid and do something super simple. Oh, I forgot to zoom you in. The whole point of me getting a bloody zoom lens is so I could zoom you in. Hopefully this is a bit better. Oh, also by the way, I forgot to mention, I did have some of the misguided like cream eyeshadow pots, but they're just really not for me. Like, I don't know. I swatched a couple of the shades. This one is called Sangria. So, why, why did I just say it like that? <laughs> Sangria, which looks like this, Um, but like putting it on the back of my hand, I don't know. It just wasn't for me. Like they're quite sheer and they don't really have much sparkle and they they do have some matte shades but like when you blend them out it was just a bit like meh so taking that hot chocolate shade just as my like crease color this brush feels really nice this shade is nice i like it it's a really nice warm medium brown color you all know me love a bit of a warm brown i'm then just gonna dip back into knit sweater which is this one and i'm gonna Blend that out or like use it to blend it a bit more. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just going to switch to the slightly smaller blending brush and I'm going to dip into the shade. Hang on. Okay, that confused me for a sec. I think this one's called Leaves. The word fairy lights was just above it, but that's this shade. I'm going to use Leaves, which is a very warm, darkish brown. This is actually the darkest shade in the eyeshadow palette. So I'm just going to put that on both eyes. I think for me personally, I would have liked to see a few more darker shades, like darker matte shades, just so you can really like deepen up your crease and especially with people that have got deeper skin to just add a little bit more depth to the look it is a very sort of like neutral natural type color scheme Ooh, i really like that color i'm just gonna add some of this to my lower lash line as well i mean they're really nicely pigmented i think this palette is 12 pounds by the way or 10 pounds it's really really affordable i'm just gonna go back in with my blending brush and just go over that I've just found this um, misguided plumping lip gloss. So I'm gonna put this on while I do the rest of my eyes. Really weird, it's like a nail polish brush. Hello. I'm gonna put some of this on while I do my eyes to see if it plumps my lips. Ooh, it smells nice. Oh, I got, ugh. apologies. Apologies for my crusty foundation lips. So far, this lip gloss isn't tingling. I'm not sure if it's supposed to. Ugh. I'm not sure what to do next in terms of, oh, okay, it's starting to tingle. I think I'm gonna take one of the shimmer shades. I am gonna try one of the glitters. Pressed glitters like this that are like actual glitter aren't usually my favorite, um, but they do look quite pretty. I just find them a bit of a pain, to be honest. Like any type of glitter that's like actual glitter, they're just a bit abrasive on the eyes to remove and sometimes a bit tricky to apply. But I am gonna take this little brush and I'm gonna take, let's see, fairy lights. Oh my God, that's so stunning. Wow, these shimmers feel really nice actually. <laughs> Don't know how well you can see there because I've got the other cream eyeshadow underneath it. The shade Fireplace is such a gorgeous formula. It feels like really smooth. And actually, I think it's the same with the shade Cozy. Oh yeah, wow, those are really metallic. <gasps> Okay, that one is stunning. Yeah, the shade Cozy and the shade Fireplace, definitely the best shimmers in the palette, I think. Okay, I'm gonna take the shade Harvest, which is this one down here. And I am gonna take this, this brush to apply it. Oh wow, that's really, really pretty actually. And you know what? I'm just gonna put this on the center of my eyelid instead of the inner part. It has actually applied nicely with this brush, but I do think it would work best with probably, well, it would be a little bit easier with a slightly bigger flat brush and probably even just my finger. I'm just gonna dip my finger into it. Yeah, wow, that is so pretty. I am just gonna take a little bit more of that um, brown shade called Leaves, just to make this a bit more of a halo 
eye. So I'm then just gonna take the shade Fairy Lights, which is this one just here. Add a little bit more, but I've still got that beaming misguided highlight in there. Wow, okay, that's very bright. And then I'm gonna take the glitter shade called Sparkler, which is this one. I'm gonna try it first with a brush, but I think these usually tend to work best with your finger. Just gonna press that on. Oh, okay, you know what? It has worked well with a brush, but I think it will be a lot easier to just kind of press that on with my finger. There's a tiny, tiny bit of fallout, but nothing major. I don't know, these glitter shades just kind of scare me. I'm just kind of pressing it onto my eyelid. Okay, there definitely is a little bit of fallout. It is sticking to my eyelid without any primer and like a lot of it has stuck. It's not just like little pieces. You know, sometimes with these pressed glitters, it's just like, it will just be like little tiny pieces that actually stick and half of it falls off. That's not the case with this. I haven't been able to get it very precise. There we go. Those are the eyes. Let's just... I mean, I think most people would know anyway that if you are gonna be putting glitter on your eyes, Definitely much more sensible to do your eyes first and then your foundation just in case you get any fallout So she's also got an eyeliner in this collection, which is the ultra precise eyeliner and oh, it's got matte white packaging That's really pretty. It just looks kind of like your standard felt tip liner pen, but it's really skinny Which is good. Do you like a skinny liner? Let's see. Okay. It's very black It's drawn over the top of the glitter, which is good. It's very liquidy. It doesn't feel dry at all. Oh, didn't mean to do such a big wing, but we'll go with it. <laughs> oh, I just did a dot on my inner corner by accident. I'll fix that in a minute. That was a really easy liquid liner to use. It's really pigmented, really liquidy. Drew over the top of the glitter. I did poke myself on my inner corner by accident, but that's really nice. For my mascara, I've got the Misguided Oh High Lash Length and Definition Fiber Mascara. I don't often go with fiber mascaras. Whoa, that brush looks really cool. It actually looks really skinny. It's a big, like long, skinny brush, but that's the kind of brush that I quite like. I'm gonna wiggle it on my root. Ooh, okay. I think they had a couple mascaras on the website. This wasn't the only one. I do actually quite like this, you know. It's definitely building nicely without getting too clumpy, which is good. I actually think that's a pretty nice mascara. It's made my lashes look really nice. It's not got masses of volume. Yeah, we definitely use that again, actually. It's really nice. I think my lashes look pretty good. So just while my mascara dries, I'm gonna do my lips. Oh yeah, by the way, the plumping lip gloss didn't really do anything. It tingled for like two seconds and then stopped. Try and wipe some off. For my lip liner, I've got one from Barry M. There is a lip liner that I really like from Barry M, which I believe is called Go To. This one is called Hun. Oh, okay, maybe not. Oh, wow, okay, that's not even gonna show up. That is such a pale. Can you see this down here? It's a really, really pale pink. I mean, I'll give it a go, but... Okay, no, it's lighter than the color of my lips. All right, then I'm just gonna line my lips with a bit of another one. This is Bare Minerals in Freestyle. Okay, then I've got one of the misguided Gimme Lip Matte Lipsticks. I do also think they've got liquid lipsticks and different glosses. This is the shade Bougie, which looks quite nice. Again, not the like not the biggest fan of this packaging. It smells kind of fruity, actually. Ooh. This one was supposed to be matte, but it actually feels quite creamy. It almost, it doesn't look too shiny, but it definitely feels quite sort of slippery and movable. I actually think this goes with the eyes quite nicely, although it's a little bit dark compared to what I would normally go for. It does feel quite nice, it feels comfortable. I would not really say that it's matte, it's probably more like satiny. It feels really nice, it feels quite lightweight. So before I stick my lashes on quickly, I completely forgot about this. This is the Benefit Professional Super Setter Long Lasting Makeup Setting Spray. I think the packaging for this looks so cool. Let's give it a shake. Oh! Okay, don't do that with your mouth open. Oh my God. It's a really nice fine mist. Oh, I love that. It's like the same sort of spray as the Fenty Beauty one, like the dewy Fenty Beauty one, which, <coughs> okay, wait, don't inhale. Let me just, one sec. It's a really nice fine mist, which I really 
really like in a setting spray. Cool, so finally I've got Roxy's False Lashes from the Revolution Collection. These look really nice, they're 100% synthetic, they've got the same sort of packaging as her palette. Slightly wispy, a little bit fanned out. They actually look really nice. I haven't seen Revolution do lashes like this nice before. Okay, I'm just gonna trim off the very end. They actually feel really nice. They're really, really flexible. Um, they feel really lightweight. I'm just using the Tatty Lashes X Jamie Genevieve Lash Glue, actually. I haven't used actual lash glue in so long because I keep using those like line and lash pens. Oh, they got stuck to the bloody things. I hate putting lashes on. Right, so my inner corners were just refusing to stick, but now that I finally got these on, they are really nice eyelashes. I really like the shape of them. They're not too much. I really like how they fan out. They're wispy. It's always the inner corners that I have a struggle with, and then it like peeled off, and some of the eyeliner came off with it, and it just was very frustrating. If they start peeling off again, please bear with me. Also, I've noticed as well that my face is already starting to be shiny, and I've been filming for about two hours, so since putting on the foundation, it's... It's just, you know, my oils are already coming through. And here we go. This is the finished look. What do you guys think? I am very quickly gonna answer a question of the day. Hopefully I can find one quickly because I've literally got like two minutes of footage left on my camera. Today's question comes from Satvika Konik and they have said, which mascara would you recommend for someone who has short and straight lashes? I've tried so many mascaras, even the bad girl bang, but no one ever curls up my lashes or makes them voluminous even if I use, oh, even if I use a lash curler before it. Thank you so much, love you so. Thank you very much. I can't necessarily speak from experience because my lashes do tend to curl pretty well, but the two that I've tried recently that I think would be really good for short lashes are the L'Oreal Telescopic and the Maybelline Sky High. Both of those have got a really skinny brush so you can really get in at the root and they both seem to lift my lashes really nicely. If anyone has short and curly lashes, let me know, And sorry, it's short and straight lashes. Let me know if you've tried them, those mascaras and if they work to maybe help this person out because yeah, I would suggest those, but I could be wrong. But for me, they work really well. I like lifting my lashes. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they would work for you. Right, I'm gonna end this here. I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, I hope you're okay. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you in the next one. Maybe this background will change, who knows? But um, yeah, for now, it might stay like this for a couple of weeks, um, but yeah, we'll get there in the end. I will see you on my next video. Bye.